Camera guys ready? Yes, sir. All set. Well, as expected, um, you know, this game, uh, which is a rivalry game between um, Arkansas and LSU, um, has come down to a field goal over the last three years. I know um, I'm probably telling something to you that you already know, but now make it four. Um, it's, it's just the nature of uh, two teams that uh, in proximity playing for a rivalry trophy. Um, and, and look, a team that was, you know, we told our team that they were going to play their very best, and I thought they played their very best. Hats off to Sam Pittman and his his team. Uh, they played outstanding football. Um, K.J. Jefferson was outstanding tonight. Um, kept plays alive, couldn't get him on the ground. Um, we tried to get him on the ground, but weren't allowed to get him on the ground. Um, so... It's just one of those games where uh, we were the last one to have the football, and um, I wasn't interested in letting um, Arkansas have another chance. So, again, a great football game. These are the games that you got to find a way to win. Um, we didn't have uh, our best performance early on, but I thought um, – we really played well uh, at the end of the half and in the second half in particular on offense. And, and defensively, you know, there's, there's a lot that, that has to continue to get better. Uh, and, and most of them are self-inflicted wounds um, that are, are going to have to get better uh, as we go on the road these next two weeks. But all in all, happy with the victory. Um, again, anytime you're playing an SEC opponent, uh, and one that is uh, highly motivated to uh, come in here. Um, we're, we're very happy with the win. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Ryan, specifically with Jaden, what do you think maybe sort of clicked for him there at the end of the first half, and what was causing him possibly to struggle early on? Yeah, he was out of rhythm. Um, if, if you watch him a little bit, um, his drop was a little bit off, and then he was rushing uh, into his throws. Um, and, and then we just we just kept reminding him about you know picking up his rhythm, uh, being a lot quicker, um, which is how he played um, and has played. And once he was able to speed up his drop, uh, he was in much better rhythm, and it took off from there. I, I, his third quarter drive um, was one of the best that, if not the best, I don't know where the feedback's coming from. Uh, it's, it's, if it wasn't the best, uh, I, I can't remember a better drive. They, they did everything in that first drive of the third quarter. They ran cover two and tried to trap it. Uh, they ran man, um, overhang stunts, and, and he, was, he was outstanding. His precision, his decision-making, protection checks, uh, delivering the ball. And that's what we expect to see from him. And, and he played to a high standard in, in the, the final three quarters. And we needed it, obviously. Uh, hey, Coach, right here. Um, you guys obviously know what you had in Malik Neighbors, and he's had a really strong start to the season. But what can you say, I guess, about Brian Thomas, who's had a, a really resurgent year for him as well, and just kind of that one-two punch that you guys have at receiver there? Yeah, I mean, we gave him the game ball. Uh, we thought the plays that he made, the big plays, uh, really, if, if you watch carefully, they were bracket covering uh, Malik. They had man-to-man uh, -man plus uh, the safety inside out with the linebacker low or drop. Um, so sometimes they had three. So we had to find alternatives. And, um, again, uh, Brian Thomas stepped up big for us, uh, made some big plays down the field. And, you know, we, we still were able to shake Malik loose on some over routes uh, that got him out of some of those double coverages. And then when we did get one-on-one, -on -one, uh, like in the third, excuse me, the fourth quarter, we got the one-on-one -on -one coverage. He, he threw a dime and dropped it right in there. So it's, it's really about the quarterback uh, making great decisions and then finding these talented receivers and, and then making plays. Brian, the, the roughing the passer call happened right in front of you. Did you think it was legit or not? Well, however I answer this question, I put myself in, in, a, in a very difficult situation. All I can tell you is that there was no um, blow to the head. There was no blow to the, to the neck area. Um, uh, he thought it was unnecessary. Um, my response was, he's 252 pounds. You try to tackle him. Um, 
we, we, we couldn't get him down on the ground. Um, you, you can't bring a rope out there. Um, and he was not trying to, um, you know, do anything else but try to get him on the ground. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, our supervisor officials will look at it, we'll send it in, and we'll, we'll get some kind of response from them. Coach right here, Logan Diggs, 14 carries. Can you kind of talk about, though, that last drive, just him being able to get those tough yards, and I know that's something you all have really been looking for. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, that was obviously the drive that, you know, we got into what we call barrier, which is, um, you know, they had no timeouts. Um, you know, we I think we ate over five minutes off the clock. I had no intention of giving them the ball back. Uh, I don't know if you guys wanted to, but I didn't. Um, and so it was really just a matter of uh, when we call barrier, we're not looking to score. We're looking to score a touchdown in that instance. Uh, we wanted to take time off the clock, um, put ourselves in a good position. We have great faith in our uh, Ramos, our field goal kicker. Um, put him in a good position, take as much time off the clock. We got it down to about five seconds, um, and, and uh, it worked out pretty good. Yeah, that, that last sequence of plays, would you have rather had no time on the clock? I mean, call the timeout after third down rather than after second down? Yeah. We, we had to let the clock run all the way down to, to get the mathematical number to that level, or we would have risked our, our situation um, to be such that we would have had to run the field goal team out there without a timeout, and I was in, interested to put ourselves in that kind of situation. Hey, Coach, did the uh, time of possession that they had, did that concern you as the game went as far as defense getting tired and into the fourth quarter? You know, I thought about it, but, you know, we, we got seven possessions in the first half. So when I looked at it at halftime and I said seven, I felt like that was going to be enough. Now, certainly we wanted more possessions because the, the numbers were, were certainly off at halftime. But – I felt like if we could get seven more in the second half, possessions weren't going to be the, 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 what would dictate the game. Um, we just needed to make some more plays on defense and continue to play really well on offense. Coach, over here, the, the phrase see ball, get ball is used with Harold Perkins a lot. Are you seeing that kind of from Whit Weeks? And overall, what do you think of his emergence as a starter? Uh, you know, I think he's – look, th this is his second start. Um, it's, it's hard for me to dissect the game from the sideline, um, but he's active. Um, you know, obviously he impacted the game in, in a positive way. Um, you know, the running game, you know, from the running back standpoint was not a factor. You know, the quarterback was a factor, um, certainly. Uh, the draw play and, you know, they carved out our four technique a couple of times on a G play. But I, I would say that in, in terms of his run game fits, they look to be really good. Um, we lost coverage on the tight end late in the game. Um, but other than that, I thought I thought um, he had a nice game. Coach, back here. You yeah. mentioned about how Malik was getting double covered, but he was still able to get his touches and have a, a really good game with two touchdowns. How important is it for him to still be able to get his touches like that for the overall success of the team and then for his morale as well. Yeah, look, that's our job as coaches. You, you can't get your best player erased. You, you got to move him around, and we move him all over the place. If, you, if we just line him up in the short field, you might as well just say he's not going to get any catches because you're just leaving him in a position where they can, in fact, take him away. They can drop the jack. They can roll the coverage. They can put the safety over the top. So we've moved him all over the place. He's played X. He plays Z. Um, and, and you have to do that when you have a, a, you know, a great player like Malik. Hey, Coach. Uh, what was Arkansas doing to sort of neutralize your guys' pass rush, at least in your opinion? Well, you know, I think we, we brought – Mostly a, a three and four man rush. You know, when we brought five, we were able to influence the pass rush a little bit, um, but we we had a hard time, you know, getting him on the ground. Um, so, you know, I, I wasn't that concerned about the the lack of a pass rush as much as I was. Um, you know, we 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 didn't do a great job uh, of getting him on the ground. Uh, so when we had chances. And he got out. We missed tackles. Um, 
you know, we're young at, at that position, and um, it's an area that, you know, we know who we are. Um, we got to get a big guy like that on the ground. Coach, has time for two more, Seth. Coach, back here. Yeah. Um, after the alma mater, you could hear the guys say, <clears throat> throw up your threes. Just how motivated was this group to play for Greg today? Oh, they've been motivated for Greg. Um, you know, he's one of our captains. Uh, he's somebody that uh, our players love. Um, you know, he's in their thoughts. He's in their prayers. Uh, and, you know, as you know, we were uh, the number three on our helmet, as did uh, I want to thank Sam Pittman and, and the Arkansas administration for um, agreeing to wear the number three on their helmet. Um, says a lot about um, – you know, the class that they showed uh, in um, honoring Greg today. Uh, so, yeah, it's, he's on everybody's minds, and, and um, you know, we're, you know we're, we're praying for him. Hey, Coach, right here. Kind of to bounce back, bounce off that. What can you say about Andre Sam and the competitive edge that he brings for you guys this game and kind of his progression from week one to now? Yeah, I mean, he, he's an active player. Um, you know, he plays with a lot of energy, and, um, you know, we, we, we need him out there. Uh, he, I don't think he takes a playoff. He's not a guy that we – he's in a rotation. There's a rotation of one. Uh, it's Andre and, and uh, Andre. Um, so, uh, again, he's a guy that uh, we're counting on, and, uh, he, you know, he's going to continue to get better. Thanks, Good. Thank you.